Hey guys, today we are going to be starting some warm weather vegetables and warm weather uh, annual flowers. And the reason why I'm starting these right now is because some of these flowering annuals and warm weather vegetables either take too long to germinate or take too long to mature after germinating. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to be starting with is eggplant. We are in late February. Right here I have three varieties of eggplants that I want to start. And I did not practice what I preach in the essence of mixing the seed starting mix with the with water before putting it in here. And that is one thing that I recommend for everyone to do to mix your seed starting mix with water before you put it into your, into your seed starting trays. Uh, because I will show you just in a second what happens if you don't. But we can fix this problem. Uh, I believe and uh, we're gonna try to do that I'm gonna try to do it with you uh, but I have everything prepared I filled all the trays with the seed starting mix and I wrote the tags and I put them in in the places where I'm going to be planting so just to kind of cut down on time so that I'm not uh, spending too much time on doing these things so let me show you quickly what happens when uh, you don't mix your uh, seed starting mix with some water before you put it into your seed starting trays. Look here, you see this water pooling right here? And underneath it, the soil is dry. Can you see that? And that's what happens when you don't mix your seed starting mix with some water before you put it in your seed starting trays. So I'm going to go ahead and get my mister and try to fix this problem again. Uh, I'm just gonna give him a quick mix. <laughs> I'm using my butter knife uh, I think if, uh, to mix the soil in. Uh, it's okay, you know, we uh, get our food from the dirt and uh, we wash it. It's not a big deal. And by the way, I'm using my grill as a table. <laughs> uh, so you gotta do what you gotta do. And if you're our chickens, they're in the background looking at me. Right, so let's go ahead and get that mister so that we can uh, try to fix this problem. So I'm going to try to mist them again and see if now they would absorb the water. No. <laughs> I think I made more work for myself by doing what I did. I was trying to hurry up. Yeah, don't do that. Maybe if I add warm water, that would help. But this mixture was so dry. Such a sad case. Actually, I'm gonna take this whole thing, dump it in this container, and start over again. <laughs> oh well. It's not like I haven't experienced this before, it's just that I was trying to rush things and I should have known better. I even soaked them in there um, from the bottom for like an hour or so and they did not absorb any water whatsoever. Because what's happening when the soil is so d dry, it actually repels water. It does not absorb water, so you kind of have to agitate it in order to absorb that water. It's looking better now. Let's see. That's good. I can add a tiny bit more water, and then we'll put it back in. Don't do what I did. And I'm just pressing the soil a little bit into the tray so that uh, it would remove any air gaps in there and also would make some space for me to put my seeds in there. And yes, I'm working with these gloves, but my hands are freezing. It's cold today, so I would rather do this than not have gloves on. Now I can put the tags back in and start planting. Don't worry, I'll clean this up. I 
I have my three favorite varieties of eggplants and we are going to start with the uh, diamond eggplants. I wanted to plant a couple more varieties that I tried last year but I don't have enough space in these and I want to save some of my seed starting trays for some other crops that I have and some other flowers. So uh, we're just gonna do these three varieties of eggplants and these are the ones that I use the most anyways. I'm going to plant two seeds in each and for this it says to plant it at a quarter of an inch a uh, quarter of an inch depth and I'm not going to thin these seedlings I'm actually going to separate them when it comes time to planting because I love eggplants and uh, all these varieties are great also for Baba Ghanoush but we do stuff eggplants and um, you can also use them in stir fries make sure I'm planting the right variety in the right place yes that's the diamond uh, you can use them in Asian dishes they have, um, there, there's a lovely Korean uh, recipe for eggplants. You can boil them a little bit and then uh, basically par cook them and take them and turn them into a salad with some olive oil and some soy sauce. It's really delicious. Okay, next one is the Mitoyo eggplant and this is great for uh, baba ganoush and you can you can also stuff this or use it for stir fry but this takes a really long time to have it to grow big I actually use it for stuffing also uh, before it matures to its full size you can do that so what I'm doing is I'm just putting the seeds in here and then I'm going to go over them and cover them with some soil Ooh, that's a lot of seeds And if this is your first time uh, starting seeds, seed starting might seem intimidating to you, but it really isn't as long as you know you kind of uh, keep an eye on them and just make sure they don't dry out. And once they get their first set of true leaves, you can start fertilizing them with half strength fertilizer. And I use an organic liquid fertilizer. And now we are going to do the real black eggplant. This is my favorite variety right here because this, when you stuff it with uh, some rice and meat uh, stuffing with the Middle Eastern flavors, this one uh, kind of tinges the rice a purplish color and it adds that amazing flavor. And uh, What's, what are they called? Anthocyathins? Yes, I think so. It's because of the anthocyathins that are in it. it has, it's high in anthocyathins. This is a hard word to say. Now we're just going to cover it with some soil. I just want to make sure to mix in some soil with some water before I put it on top because I don't want to uh, have the same problem happen. So we're going to put these back. Now that we're done with them. And I took my gloves off for putting the seeds in the trays because seeds are very small and I don't want to uh, I, I don't want to uh, accidentally pinch too many seeds and put them in there. I just want to put just as, as much as I need. Right. And we're going to cover the top with just some soil to cover enough to cover the seeds. I'm just gonna quickly give it a sprinkle of water to settle those seeds in there and just to make sure that this water gets through to the bottom. Look at that, 
No more water repellent action. And the next seeds we are starting right now are peppers. And I'm going to have two trays, one for sweet peppers and one for hot peppers. And all I have to do right now is just cover this with a dome and put it under my grow light. And we'll do that after we are... They don't need light to germinate, but um, they are going to be in that room. And then once they germinate, we could turn on the lights. So you can see it's the same problem with this tray. The water is pooling at the top. So I'm just going to dump this whole thing into this container over here. First, let's remove these. If this is your first year gardening, your first instinct is probably just to go and buy some uh, already pre-started plants and there's no problem with that. And if you feel completely intimidated by this, uh, by seed starting, you can go ahead and do that uh, and buy yourself some plants. But if you uh, want to save on some money, you can start seeds, um, plants from seeds, and it's a lot cheaper to do so than to buy plants, uh, plants or plant starts. And uh, all you need is either a south facing window so, uh, with direct sunlight, uh, or you can also uh, make uh, your own grow lights, uh, grow light sets. And uh, I have a blog post on that and I will leave a link for it in the description box below. I also did a video on that too. So I'll leave both the link for the blog post and the video if you want to check out on how to do that. And making your own grow light uh, setup is uh, a lot cheaper than uh, buying it uh, fully uh, made because uh, you could buy the you could buy the stand separately uh, whichever stand you want and uh, according to however budget you have uh, and you could buy fluorescent light uh, or LED light LED light in my opinion are better even though they are a little bit more expensive up front because they are going to save you on power uh, or power consumption and uh, like you see I start almost everything from seeds uh, there are a lot, there are a few plants that I do buy and uh, those plants are uh, mainly plants that would take a really long time to start from seeds or a really long time to start from cuttings oh this one is a little bit dry so those are the plants that I would buy or uh, like trees for example or shrubs you know uh, that kind of stuff those I would buy from uh, either plant starts or uh, large plants and those are this is where I kind of keep my uh, budget on the smaller side and it allows me to buy those plants that I like uh, so that when I do want to buy them uh, because I'm not spending so much money on uh, the on plant starts and uh, on annual flowers and all that stuff because I am planting everything from seed. Now, the, don't get me wrong, there are beautiful annual flower varieties out there, and, and not that I'm against having them. I would love to have them, but uh, I just uh, I. I like one thing is that I like is annuals that don't require a lot of maintenance uh, but also at the same time provide tons of color because I don't have that much time to take care of uh, annuals. Uh, I don't like fussy plants because I don't have the time for them. And also, um, where was I going with this? <laughs> I think what I, where I was trying to say, what I was trying to say is that annuals, annual flowers can be pretty expensive if you want to make like a big show uh, with them because they are beautiful. They bloom for most of the season and they, they provide you with tons of color. But by starting them from seeds, you can, you know, you might not have the same varieties, but you would still have beautiful varieties. And some of them, or a lot of them, are not even in nurseries because uh, 
either they don't think about growing them because maybe they're they think that people might not uh, gravitate towards them because they want to you know sell you something that uh, they want to put out there something that everyone would gravitate towards that's just kind of like a, a showstopper uh, but uh, if you just do a little bit of research online for um, uh, about annual flowers from seeds uh, you can find tons of varieties that are so beautiful that you can start from seeds and you would love them and uh, they would provide you with all the color and beautiful texture um, and it's going to be so cheap <laughs> and yes right now I am planting peppers but I am also talking about you know buying plant starts and um, versus starting uh, your plants from seed and uh, some of the plants that I'm starting today are flowers of course. so I have four different varieties of sweet peppers we have the ash county pimento pepper and this variety is really sweet and uh, you can actually ripen peppers on the counter and you don't have to have them ripen uh, outdoors and because we live in such a in a climate where we have a short season that's what I do you can ripen them just like you do tomatoes and um, that works great just put them on the counter uh, don't let them touch and they would ripen just fine okay so I'm planting one row of the ash county pimento pepper one line of the Ozark giant pepper and all these seeds you're going to plant them at a quarter of an inch depth and I'm all about making my life in the garden easy so uh, this is why I have things like these trays because it's just kind of streamlined I don't have to uh, get all these little different pots I just start them in here they get watered from the bottom and I also when they're in the, in the young stage I just uh, use a uh, the water mister that you see saw me use to water them so that uh, uh, they don't kind of get soaked in the water and get uh, mold or, or algae or um, dampening off which is when the uh, seed rots at the bottom the seedling rots at the base and dies off so right now sorry I didn't tell you what I'm starting I'm just starting some uh, gabanella gabanelle peppers and these are one of my favorite peppers and you can uh, I still have some peppers actually uh, not in the freezer do I have them in the freezer no I have some freeze-dried peppers uh, from last year and I've been using them and they are wonderful still <laughs> so I'm planting two rows of these freeze drying is a great way to preserve your food and if you're interested in preserving your food through freeze drying and you don't have a freeze dryer yet or you want to, to have uh, accessories for your freeze dryer I have a link an affiliate link with the uh, harvest right freeze dryer and I'll leave that in the uh, description box below so last thing we are starting is with these sweet peppers is the king of the north pepper and I haven't tried this yet I bought the seeds last year and I was saving them to try for this year uh, and Supposedly, they're supposed to be good for this environment, so we'll see how they do over here. And last year, I put my peppers and eggplants under a frost cover to extend their season, and I was able to get another harvest from them. I'm gonna cover them and set them aside and right now we are going to start on the hot peppers so I'm going to do the same thing again I don't need to record this part I need to dump these mix the soil with some water and uh, then we'll start let's start with the cayenne long slim peppers and I got these from MI Gardener this is my first time uh, trying uh, 
seeds from his company so super excited I'm sure they're gonna be great quarter of an inch depth same and I'm only planting one row of each of these spicy peppers because they are spicy <laughs> and I just need them for the flavor like we don't eat tons of spicy peppers I am I wouldn't say the only person that eats spicy uh, food but I am definitely the one that eats the most spicy food and my tolerance for spicy has decreased over the years because I had to cook less and less uh, with spicy food because most of my family does not like spicy food so we are doing right now the Anaheim chili pepper Ham, jalapeno peppers. So excited. <laughs> I've been waiting so long to start my pepper seeds and you know, want to make sure not to start them too early but you also want to make sure not to start them too late and because we live in a cold environment I have to start them a little bit earlier than probably some of you do and we don't have a very long growing season. Okay, the only one that I'm starting two rows of is the banana peppers because banana peppers are not super spicy and we all love them and they're great for pickling um, and for using over chili or chili fries or whatever you want to use them over pizzas they're just great and if you pick them early actually they're not spicy at all but if you do let them mature, they get a little bit spicy. The last one is the pimento de padron pepper. And this is uh, spicier than the banana peppers, but less spicy than the jalapeno pepper. But they're really good. It's a super good flavor. So the last one right now of today. <laughs> First thing we're going to start with is this pink plume celery and according to the package it needs to be sown at a quarter of an inch depth. Okay so I guess I was wrong on that. This is, I haven't planted cel celery in a really long time but celery does require a long time to both germinate and to uh, grow after germinating. Germinating. <laughs> so the seeds are pretty small and I'm going to be planting two rows of this. They almost resemble carrot seeds. Almost. Even carrot seeds are bigger than this. <laughs> I mean, what am I talking about? <laughs> I planted smaller seeds than these, but they are still small. Next one we are going to be planting is the Celeraic Brilliant and I forgot how this looks like. I got this seed packet, I don't know, like three years ago or so, maybe longer, and I haven't planted it yet. I wanted to, but I haven't tried it yet, so we'll see. This is from Johnny Seeds. Eighth of an inch deep, okay. And now for the fun and exciting part. Oh, I've been waiting for this for so long. I wish I could even plant more of these, but I only have so much space under my grow lights and so much um, space in the garden for now until I have more spaces. So we're going to be planting these zonal ger geraniums and this is the apple blossom geranium. So I'm gonna plant this and it says to plant it at eighth of an inch depth. Okay, so all these seeds basically require just a barely covering them. So you could just cover them all the same after we're done. I love geraniums and my mom always had geraniums in the garden. We had the scented geraniums and we had uh, these geraniums and 
Where I grew up, they were a perennial. I don't know if they're a different variety or what, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think where I grew up, it would be equiv equivalent to zone eight. But I can tell you this though, I prefer the cold weather <laughs> over that hot weather any time of the year, even right now, when I'm freezing cold. <laughs> Next one is the pink bicolor zonal geranium. And look at this beauty. And the reason why I'm planting a lot of varieties of these is because the kids also love to have them in their garden. So I want to make sure that they would have some of them uh, in their garden. So by planting tons of them, we get to plant them everywhere. And I'm just going to separate them once they grow. I'm not going to divide them. I'm not going to thin them, I should say. And I'm thinking of bringing some of them indoor also once the season is over because I want to have them continue to grow inside and then just kind of bring, bring them back outside. I want to plant some of them in pots on the deck. And the last one I'm going to be planting for today is this uh, F1 rose. And I thought my son would probably like this. It's kind of on the reddish side. Uh, we'll see. I think I might like this. It looks like a magenta more than a red. So. Um, it's a beautiful color and I think that that would actually look very nice uh, in front of the house and some pots I just need to find some nice pots that are not super expensive uh, maybe I can go again to the thrift store and try to find some nice pots uh oh got three seeds in here I can't feel my fingers anymore. <laughs> They're freezing. <laughs> okay, I dropped one with the celery there. Uh, I think I'm gonna put this over here just because it got wet and I don't wanna put it back in there. <laughs> there. Oh, there's another one. Okay, well, well. I guess we're having uh, a lot of uh, the magenta one. There we go. Just a very thin layer of soil. Oops. <laughs> it's okay. I'll, I'll spread it a little bit in between them. Now all these are going to go in uh, the grow room downstairs. I'm not going to take you there right now. I've done a video on how to make your own grow lights uh, and I'll link that in the description box below and at the end of this video. If you guys have any questions, leave them, leave them in the comment section down below and if you have uh, any comments, leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time and I'll be leaving uh, the uh, grow light video for you over here and some other video on this side that probably YouTube will suggest. Alright, I gotta clean up this mess. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again next time. Bye.